Salut tout le monde, c'est Madame Charman ici and today we're going to be looking at the top 10 writing exam misconceptions. So a few weeks ago I marked my year 10 mock exams um, and I've just gone through them and I've taken the opportunity to look at what are the top 10 errors that my students make time and time again. So in this presentation or this video I'm going to go through um, some of the some of the main errors. I'm going to be using examples from my year 10 um, mocks. Shout out to my year 10s. Um, I'm going to be explaining why people tend to make these errors and normally they're quite logical. Um, but yeah, we're going to address them and then I'm also going to set some exercises for you to do to consolidate our learning. Uh, alors, on va commencer. Allez. So, the first thing that I find, okay, coming in at number one, we've got the missing out of the definite article. What is the definite article, I hear you ask? It's one of those meta, meta terms. Um, which basically means um, a really complicated um, technical term for a piece of language. Um, but don't don't get co confused by this. Uh, the definite article is literally just the word the. And we know that in French, by the way, if you hear anything in the background, that is my um, daughter <laughs> um, who's currently playing with her toy remote control. Anyway. The is the definite article. We know in French that to say the, we can say le, we can say la, and we can say les. I've missed out one, which is L with the apostrophe, but I just don't want to overcomplicate things. We use le for masculine words. We use la for feminine words. And there I've been very, very um, gender normative and I've put Le, the masculine um, definite article in blue, the feminine one in pink, don't hate me. Um, and then we've got le for plural. So this is an example of a uh, phrase that I saw when I was marking uh, the exams. J'aime fast food. Quite easy to see what this student means. I like fast food. It's a literal translation from the English. However, that is incorrect because in French, we always have to, well, we use the definite article a lot more than in English. So we would actually say, j'aime le fast food. I like the fast food. And actually, when you hear um, French people in, 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 um, um, speaking, they often put in the definite article when they don't need it. So you might, when they, you hear them speaking English, sorry. So you might hear them say, I like the fast food. Yeah, I like the fast, I'm not going to try and do an accent because, um, yeah, that'll just be embarrassing. But I like the fast food. You might hear that mistake. Don't fall into the same trap when writing in French. So, this is another uh, phrase I saw. À mon avis, excellent, they're using an opinion. Collège est ennuyeux. In my opinion, school is boring. <gasps> Scandalous. Um, so, once again, they've missed out the. Yeah, you have to say, in my opinion, the school is boring. So, à mon avis, le collège est ennuyeux. Super. Okay, then next one. Je déteste devoir. They've missed out the definite article, so that's incorrect. And devoir, which you should know means homework, you'll see it has an S on the end. In French, it is plural rather than singular. So we're not going to say um, je déteste le devoir. Which the are we going to use? You've got it. Je déteste les devoirs. So on your screens now, you will see three phrases or sentences. I would like you to translate those for me. So pause the screen and try your best to translate those. Okay, très bien. I hope you've had enough time to complete those translations. Uh, let's now have a look at the answers. On va regarder les réponses. Alors, numéro un, j'adore les chats. Très bien. Um, we've added in the definite article and we've made it plural because cats is plural. Numéro 2. À mon avis, la France est belle. France is a feminine country, so we say la. A clue that it's a feminine country, it ends in an E. Um, did you remember to put belle instead of beau because um, to, to make it agree with the feminine noun? Well done if you did. Numéro 3. Je déteste le foot. Nice and easy. Let's move on. 
So number two, another common error, mixing up countries and languages slash nationalities. Now, actually, a lot of people do this in their English work as well. Um, so it is something that people get mixed up quite easily. This is a phrase that I saw in my recent exam marking. Je pense que Angleterre est difficile. Now, literally, that says I think that England is difficult. And I think what this person probably wanted to say was I think that English is difficult. So, in order to change that, okay, Angleterre is England, Anglais is English. So, we would say, je pense que l'anglais est difficile. And what do you notice here? We have included the definite article because it was forgotten in this first example. OK, let's see the next example. So this student wrote, je voudrais étudier en français. Excellent use of the conditional tense, good use of an interesting verb, étudier. But they said, I would like to study in French. Now, unless the student meant I would like to study French, in which case they need to remove the en, um, I'm pretty sure they wanted to say I would like to study in France because of the context of the question, in which case we saw France in the previous um, on the previous slide is la France. So we're going to say, je voudrais étudier en France. Très bien. Okay, so, oh goodness, I really hope you can't hear that in the background, but um, my daughter's busy and playing, so she's happy. Okay, on the screen now, you will see a table of countries um, and then, so we've got one column of all different countries in English. The next column we've got, um, you need to write them in French. Then we've got the nationality, which I'd like you to write in English for the country in the same row. And then we've got nationality, so you write it in French. Um, I mean, it, it's interchangeable. It could be um, nationality, it could, it could be language. Almost always interchangeable because, for example, if we look at the United States, the language, yeah, it isn't the same as the nationality because they speak English. So it's not always the case, but quite often it is. So if you could pause your screen, you might have to do a little bit of research, use an online dictionary like wordreference.com um, and see how you get on. OK, so I hope you've had enough time to do that. Uh, let's look at the responses. Voila. OK, I won't go through them all. However, you might notice um, some common kind of endings. So if we have a look at um, nationality or language, we've got an AIS on the end of Français, an AIS on the end of Portugais, Polonais, Japonais. So if you see an AIS on the end of, um, of something that looks like a country, you'll know it's a nationality or a language. Also put an E on the end in case you're referring to a girl. Um, you can also see here we've got two similar endings with l'Espagne, Allemagne, Pologne. Um, but other than that, they're a little bit random, aren't they, the endings of the countries? Um, we've also got some similar endings on these nationalities, Italian, American. Uh, they sound similar, but we've got an E-N and an A-I-N-S. -E, so they're, they're slightly different with spelling. Um, yeah, it's just a case of learning them, really. I mean, there are some endings that to help you, uh, but yes, you need to learn it. OK, on va continuer. Then coming in at number three, we've got adding unnecessary apostrophes. So, for example, this is something that I've seen recently in a mock paper. Je déteste le racisme. And we've got J apostrophe, which is not actually needed. Now, I understand why people do this, especially with je déteste, because if we look at j'adore, I love, we've got J apostrophe. If we look at Jem, I like, we've got J apostrophe. So hold on, wait a minute. Why can't I say je déteste with a um, apostrophe? Well, you'll notice here with j'adore, 
the way this is made up is we've got je, which is I, we've got adore, which is love. But what we can't have in French in lots of circumstances, not all the time, which is annoying, but we can't really have a word that ends with a vowel next to a word that starts with a vowel. Obviously, we know that our vowels are A, E, oh, goodness me, I, O, and U. So we can't have them together. So what we do is we cross them out, bring the two words together and add an apostrophe. Can you see how that sounds so much better? Je adore sounds really clunky and gross, whereas j'adore flows nicely. Next one, j'aime. Once again, je, m. We can't have these two letters together, so we cross them out and it becomes j'aime. Let's take a look at je déteste. So we've got je and we've got déteste. However, D is not a vowel, so the test doesn't start with a vowel, in which case we don't need to make it flow. It already sounds fine as it is, je déteste. Hopefully that makes some sense to you. Um, on the screen now, then, you will see five sentences. Tous les jours, j'aide les sans-abri. Normalement, je mange un sandwich. Le soir, j'écoute de la musique. Pour faire mes devoirs, j'utilise mon ordinateur. And je déteste regarder la télé. What I would like you to do, please, is go through those. I would like you to decide if each of them is correct or incorrect. Um, and if it's incorrect, I would like you to try to correct it for me, please. So pause your screens and have a go at that. OK, hopefully you've had enough time to do that. Let's have a look at your answers. So, tous les jours, j'aide les sans-abri. Every day I help homeless people. That is correct. Bravo. Je ends with an E. Ed it starts with an A, so we've got two vowels together that we need bringing into one word. Numéro 2. Normalement, je mange un sandwich. So there, that's actually changed because mange starts with a consonant. Numéro 3. Le soir, j'écoute de la musique. That is completely accurate um, because écoute starts with a vowel. Numéro 4. Pour faire mes devoirs, j'utilise mon ordinateur. Correct, again, you is a vowel. Et finalement, je déteste regarder la télé. Well, I will, like, lose my mind. Well, you know, if you didn't get this correct, because it is in the example. So, je déteste regarder la télé is what we need to change it to. OK, super. Alors, on va continuer maintenant. And let's have a look at what is coming in at number four. So, coming in at number four, we have got getting the word order mixed up with negatives. So, negatives are quite complicated. Well, they're not complicated, but they can be confusing because it's slightly different to the way we do it in English. And I remember when I was at school, it was one of the things that used to trip me up. Um, it does get a bit more complicated when we go into different tenses. So, today we're going to be concentrating just on um, getting the present tense correct. So this is an example of a phrase I saw in a student's work. C'est ne intéressant pas. Uh, this student is trying to say it is not interesting. Hopefully they're not talking about French. I don't think they were, so it's okay. Next phrase. Parce que ne bien pas. Once again, this student is trying to say because it isn't good. Definitely not talking about French. Um, so they're incorrect. Let's see why. I mean, I understand what that student's saying, so they are communicating something, but the accuracy isn't there. Okay, why has a picture of a sandwich appeared on the screen, Miss Sharman? Well, I can tell you why. Um, when we are writing negatives, I like to think of it as a sandwich. In the middle, we need, always need to have the verb, and either side, we have ne and we have pa. OK, so the verb goes in the middle of ne and pa. So what we have to do is we have to try and um, identify the verb. So if we take that first example, student trying to say it is not interesting. Our first task before thinking about translating it is to find uh, the verb. Now, people often forget what a verb is, what an adjective is. So a verb is a doing word and is 
um, people often don't, students often don't realize it's a verb, but it is, it is a verb. Remember that it is a verb. Um, so that's our verb. So we know that we need N and P around the word for is. So we know that the word for is is E, E-S-T. Um, so the N and the P is going to go around those. The word for it is S. So let's have a look at our translation. We've got S N E P A intéressant. Okay. Um, we're almost there with this, but thinking about our previous um, one of our previous slides. What's going wrong here? You've got it. We can't have those two vowels together. So it becomes, ce n'est pas intéressant. Can you see how that sounds so much nicer than, ce n'est pas intéressant. Yes, yeah? ce n'est pas intéressant. Okay, next one. Because it is not good. So let's have a look again. It is ce. Um, is not, it's the same as the first example. Air goes in the middle of ne and pas because it's the verb. And then, uh, good is bien, so parce que ce ne est pas bien. But once again, that sounds a bit gross, doesn't it? Ce ne est pas bien. We need to make it flow. Parce que ce n'est pas bien. Très bien. Okay, on the screen, you have got three translations to complete. Please pause the screen now and complete those. Okay, rebonjour la classe. Uh, let's go through them. Numéro 1, ce n'est pas amusant. Numéro 2, je n'aime pas les chats. Uh, les chats. Um, so with this one, it, we, we've changed it slightly because it's a new verb. The verb is M. Okay, so the nut and the pad go around the M. Uh, je n'aime pas les chats. And um, well done, this student has remembered to put les. Yeah, the cats. Did you remember to put that? Let me know in the comments. Um, actually don't because I've turned the comments off so I don't receive trolling. Numéro 3. I don't play football et je ne joue pas au foot. Once again, we've got a new verb which is joue to play and we've got ne and pas around that verb. Well done if you got all three of those right. Okay, moving on to slide 5. Confusing je n'ai pas and je n'aime pas. This is, I see this all the time. Okay, they sound so similar. Je n'ai pas, je n'aime pas. Yeah, if you blink, you miss it. So, j'ai is I have, and j'aime is I like. We know that. So, when they become negatives, when we do the sandwich of the verb and the nut and pa around the verb, um, th it maintains that meaning. So, je n'ai pas is I don't have, je n'aime pas is I don't like. I'm not going to spend any longer on this um, because it's quite simple. So, can you please pause your screen and translate? those two phrases. Merci. Hello, hopefully you've managed to do that. So, regardons. Numéro 1, je n'aime pas les chiens. Did you remember to put les as well? Oops. Did you remember uh, your ne and your pas in the right order? If so, well done. Et numéro 2, je n'ai pas le temps. Très bien. Number six, another one that I see a lot, confusing il y a and ils sont. The, so here um, is one example that I saw recently. Uh, so les cigarettes, à mon avis, il y a dégoûtantes. All that student is trying to say is cigarettes, in my opinion, they are disgusting. Now, the key to this and seeing why this is incorrect is knowing the difference between there are and they are in English because quite often when we're talking we make that grammatical mistake in English okay we interchange them when we shouldn't they are two separate terms grammatically so let's look at this really cute picture of a dog and two cats if we were to describe this picture and we do a lot of describing pictures in French um, we would use there are and there is to describe exactly what exists on that photograph okay so for example if we look here we've got on the photo there is a cat there's the cat there's just one cat um so that's why we use is singular okay however there are there are i'm saying not they are two oh here i mean dogs and it's going to take me ages to write this now, but there we go. <laughs> there are two dogs. Um, 
So we have there is and there are, and then we've got they are cute because here we're not describing what exists, but we are now describing the animals. So we're using they are instead of there are. Hopefully you get that. It's, it's hard to explain, isn't it really? But you, you can see those differences there. So if we look at the French, we would say sur la photo il y a un chat, sur la photo il y a deux chiens. But what do you notice? In French, il y a means there is and it also means there are. Okay, um, so you don't need to change change that for the plural. Um, but they are is something totally different. It's ils sont, ils sont mignons. Okay, so if we go back and look at our example of les cigarettes, à mon avis, il y a des goûtantes. We need to change it to les cigarettes, à mon avis, ils sont dégoûtantes. They are disgusting instead of they are disgusting. However, this isn't quite accurate. Well done if you've spotted the mistake. So, cigarette, if we look at that ending, that is a very common feminine ending. So, cigarette is actually a feminine word. So, instead of saying ils sont, what are we going to say? Elles sont. Super la classe. So, what I would like you to do, please, and this is really annoying now because I've got, um, <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, so I've got three questions, multiple choice. Can you please choose the correct translation for each one? Being very careful. Pause your screen. Egg go. Okay, hello again. So let's have a look at the answers to these questions. So numéro un, there are lots of people at the museum. Il y a beaucoup de personnes au musée. Très bien, well done if you got that correct. I've used the example of a museum, by the way, because in the translation that my year 10s did, not many of them knew the translation. Museum is musée. Um, okay, numéro deux. Do I think that they are rude. So here we are describing people as opposed to saying that they exist. So we know we're going to use ils sont, but is it B or is it C? The answer is, of course, B. Je pense qu'ils sont impolis. That is because we have got the two vowels together again on option C. Je pense que ils sont impolis, and it doesn't have the right flow. Uh, okay, numéro trois. This is a trick question. They are eating. So, I mean, you might think it is ils sont mange. Oh, I can't even say that. It sounds horrendous. Um, if you remember my my year tens, when we are talking about an action that is happening, we're using that ing in French. They would get rid of the r and they would just say they eat. Uh, but they'd add the ENT on the end uh, to go with they. So the correct answer is actually C, il mange. Well done if you got that correct. Okay, number seven, really common misconception, not knowing which in to use. Um, it's not the end of the world if you get the wrong in, but it just looks a bit more sophisticated, a bit more fluent uh, to an examiner if you can get it right. So let's look at the varying examples. If you're saying in a city, in a town, or in a village, use a. For example, j'habite à Stoke-on-Trent. If you're using a feminine, talking about a feminine country, you're saying in, or also to. Yeah, I'm going to France on holiday. You use this as well. Uh, we use en. Now, most countries are feminine. So, for example, en Angleterre, en France, en Espagne, and we went through the countries on the other slide. So, you've got loads of examples there. Uh, if you're saying in a masculine country, and there aren't many of those at all, you would use O. So here are some examples. We've got O Portugal, O Peiba. We've also got Japan as well as masculine, O Japan. So O Portugal could mean in Portugal. It could also mean to Portugal. Next. So if you're saying something that is followed by the or a, which we now know are articles, we use don. Um, so if you wanted to say, for example, in the living room, because we have that the there, we'd use dans. Dans le salon, dans le jardin, in the garden, dans un supermarché, in a supermarket. Now, if we're saying in without the the, and we're not referring to a country or a place, uh, like, I mean, a city, town, village, we would use um, en again. So, for example, en classe, 
because you would say in class, I am in class. You wouldn't say I'm in the class, really. Uh, en troisième, which is in year 10, um, and en prison, hopefully you'll never have to say that, but it's in prison. Um, if you're talking about a month or a season, use en. This comes up quite a lot in writing exams. So en hiver would be in winter, en janvier, in January. So can you please complete this translation by filling the gaps? Pause your screen, read through it, take your time. Okay, rebonjour. Let's go through these answers. So, j'ai beaucoup d'amis qui habitent à Manchester because Manchester is a, a city, so we're using this one. Uh, Manchester se trouve en Angleterre because it, Angleterre is a feminine country. J'ai aussi un ami qui habite au Portugal. Portu, Portugal is a masculine country. Je l'ai rencontré dans un musée. Okay, because we are saying in a, we use dans un. Uh, malheureusement, unfortunately, love that word, remember it. Il est allé en prison en février. Um, En prison, because we're saying in without the, in prison, yeah. En février, because February is a month. Well done. Okay, number eight, copying out a votre from the question. Lots of students do this and it's easy, an easy mistake to make because what you, well, I'll go through it now. So here is an example of a recent exam question um, for AQA GCSE French. Vous décrivez vos rapports avec les autres pour un magazine français. You're describing your relationships with others for a French magazine. Décrivez, this is what you've got to describe. Votre meilleur ami, des activités avec vos copains, un anniversaire récent, uh, votre préférence pour le mariage à l'avenir. Well, if we look at that first bullet point, votre meilleur ami. Votre means your. So, when I see this, votre mon meilleur ami s'appelle James, what this person has done is they've just panicked and they've kind of, they've used a good exam technique, which is using the question and really reading it carefully, but they've obviously not understood what votre meant. So they've just thought, oh goodness, I don't know what that means, but I better include it. Uh, actually, that makes your sen a really good sentence look a bit rubbish to be fair because votre means your okay so what you've actually written there is your my best friend is called James which you know it's, it's nonsense so we don't need it don't copy votre don't copy vos votre means your if it's singular vos means your if it's plural you might say to me miss but I thought tantante meant your um votre and vos are um, the plural or formal um, equivalents. So what you need to change votre and vos to, okay, if you see that in a question, you know you've got to change it to mon, ma or me for my uh, to make it personal to you. So I would like you to produce a very short answer to the following question, just a couple of lines. Décrivez votre famille. You should know what that means now. Okay. So here is my example. Ma famille est petite. My family is small. Nous sommes trois personnes. We are three people. Uh, doesn't sound very good in English, but it works in French. Il y a mon mari, ma petite fille et moi. There is my husband, my daughter and me. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, I don't actually have a husband. Um, I'm not married. Je ne suis pas mariée. I'm not sure why I wrote that. Maybe it's wishful thinking. Uh, right, so... You can see here that I've not said votre, I've said ma. That's the main thing, okay? Numero neuf, okay, we're almost there. We're almost at number 10. So the ninth most common error is confusing M and com. Both of them mean like, okay? In English, we use like in different circumstances. This is an example I saw recently. J'aime les restaurants, M Pizza Hut. So straight away, it sounds a bit weird because you've got M twice. What this person is trying to say is I like restaurants like Pizza Hut. Not sure why Pizza Hut would be your first choice of restaurant. Can't stand it myself. Anyway, that's another matter. So it's incorrect. M is like if you're giving your opinion. OK, so j'aime les restaurants. That bit's fine. We use calm if we're using like as a comparison. So here where we've got M Pizza Hut, that needs to be changed to calm. Or if you want to be a bit fancier, tel que. 
is such as and par exemple is for example so switch it up a little bit so can you please complete this fill the gap well it's not a fill the gap translation it's just a uh, it's just um, a translation i like lots of different uh, subjects like english maths and science for your screens go Salut tout le monde, hope you've managed to do that and you're not just, um, ignore me, right. So, I like lots of different subjects, like English, Math and Science. J'aime beaucoup de matières différentes, uh, so we've used j'aime there because it's an opinion. And then you can choose what to put either comme, tel que, or par exemple, l'anglais, les maths et les sciences. Remembering that maths and science are plural. Um, yeah, I would personally have used telco here. I think it sounds the most sophisticated. And finally, number 10. Coming in at number 10, using tu instead of en. So tu means you, okay? However, if we look, uh, so, uh, and you can also say vous for you, of course, if it's formal or plural. However, there is a general you. Um, so if, if we look at this example in English, an advantage of the internet is that you can share photos. We're not literally saying you, you Sophie, you can share photographs. We're saying in general, you can share photos. Yeah, anyone can share photos. We're not just referring to kind of one person or a group of people. So what we would need to do is get rid of that you. And in English, we can interchange it with one. It sounds very posh. Um, but in French, they use it all the time. OK, so if you can interchange you with one, uh, that is when we need to use en instead of tu or vous. So an advantage of the Internet is that one can share photos. So this is what I saw recently in a student's um, piece of work. And really good, apart from the two thing. An avantage d'Internet est tu peux partager uh, des photos. We would change that to... An avantage d'internet est, and, and I would actually probably add a que um, here, is that on peut partager des photos. And you might notice that we've had to change the ending there of peu uh, because with two we use an X, but with on we use a T. Um, so with that in mind, can you please do these gap fill translations? This is the final activity. Pause your screens. Go. OK, regardons les réponses ensemble. Let's look at the uh, responses together. So, numéro 1, dans ma ville, on peut aller au cinéma. Yeah, in my town, you can go to the cinema. We're not literally saying you can go to the cinema. We're saying in general, you can go to the cinema if you want to. Numéro 2, um, during the lockdown, you can work when you want. Um, <clears throat> so, pendant le confinement, on peut travailler quand on veut. You should really be working. Your normal nine to three timetable, but um, you do have a bit more flexibility there. Um, so we've got two ons there. And then finally, you are very annoying, Miss Sharman, making us do all of this work. Um, we're not going to say on here because we are literally referring to one person or a group of people. So we're going to say tu es très énervant. If you're referring to a girl, like if you were talking to me, for example, you'd use an E. But also, if you were talking to me, because I'm an adult, the two would change to vous and the air would change to et. But that's for another lesson. Of course, another common misconception is the use of tenses. But that's a whole other ball game that, that, that I'm not going into today. <laughs> OK, merci. Um, stay safe. Restez en bonne santé. Au revoir. Bye bye.